Right, we've got a little experiment today. This is why you need a vapour barrier. I've got a metal bucket, galvanised bucket here, that's going to represent our van. I've insulated half of it with this recycled plastic insulation and then wrapped it with a vapour barrier. So there's about an inch and a half of insulation there on one side. The other side of the bucket, completely plain. Today it's about 20 degrees. 20 degrees centigrade here in the workshop. So if we look on the psychometric chart, 20 degrees, 50% RH. We're looking for a dew point around about between eight and nine degrees. That's where we're gonna get condensation forming. So to help us, I've got some ice cubes. I've got a can of water. I'm gonna put some ice in the bucket, top it up with water, and then we're just gonna leave it and see what happens. What I anticipate is condensation on this side. When we take the insulation off this side, nothing at all, dry as a bone. Okay, let's do it. All right, ice is going in. There should be plenty of ice. Now for some water. right that should be nice and cold in there that should be well below the dew point now the thermal conductivity of steel is about 50 watts per meter k so i can already see within seconds i can already see the can misting up where the condensation is forming on the outside of the can so that doesn't take long at these temperatures and these conditions so if it's nice and warm in your van and humid and it's cold outside this is what's going to be happening on the inside of your van within seconds condensation is starting to form so we'll leave that to percolate for a little bit longer and then we'll come back and just for reference the time is now 3 25 in the afternoon I have taped all of these joints, made sure that this is fully sealed. I don't want any air getting in here because that is what is going to make this side sweat. If the warm, moist air gets into this insulation, this side will be sweating as much as this side will. Okay, let's leave it for a while and see what happens. Right, so a little bit of an update. We're a little bit over half an hour from when we started this experiment. Temperature's only dropped half a degree in here, so pretty much the same. And I can already see really clear, defined moisture line there where it's cold. And if you look closely, there's already beads of water forming on there. So that's, you know, that's getting really wet. I can see, if you catch it in the right light, you know, you can see beads of sweat forming there. Now, obviously, we've got nothing on the outside of the insulation. Wouldn't expect to, because this is a lot warmer. The key will be when we cut all that tape and open it up, the proof in the pudding is, will there be any condensation on the other side? Just another little update. Time, 5.17, so nearly two hours. Still got some ice in the bucket. And there's proper beads of condensation on there now, look. There's not long before that's going to be running down the bucket. There's a lot of water on there now. And obviously that would be the inside skin of your van if you didn't have a vapour barrier. Moist air would get in there and the entire surface of your van would be sweating like this bucket is now. And that's only just two hours. Okay, so we've left it in the studio for a bit longer. Time now is 7.08, so it's just three and a half hours from when we started. And you can clearly see now, still a bit of ice in there, so it's nice and cold. And we've got distinct runs, water on the countertop. 
I mean, it is dripping with water on this side. So that would be pretty horrendous if that was happening inside your van. Now, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna cut through all this foil vapor barrier, pull off this insulation and check what we get on the other side. Now I've got to cut through this vapor barrier here, down both sides and then peel that away. Now the bucket is very cold. So we need to have a look at it straight away, that it's dry. And then obviously, as soon as we expose it to the atmosphere, it will start sweating. So yeah, we just need to check what it's like immediately after ripping the insulation off. So let's do it. There you go. That was absolutely bone dry in there. Not one single drop of water, condensation or anything. Obviously it's immediately starting to sweat now we've exposed it, but there was nothing in there that was absolutely bone dry. I know it says kindling, but that's my kindling bucket. <laughs> yeah, there's proof for you. That is why you need a vapor barrier. Do you want this in your van? Or do you want your van to be completely bone dry? And all that insulation that's come off of there is absolutely bone dry. I know you'll have to take my word for it, but there's not a single drop or just any signs of moisture there at all. It's totally bone dry, that. And the reason why there was no condensation on that side of the bucket that was insulated is because that foil barrier is preventing any of the moist air that's in the studio here get into that cold side of the bucket. And that's the only thing that's stopping that side of the bucket sweating is that foil barrier. And that's how effective it is. Nothing can get through there, no condensation will form. Prevention is far better than cure. So there you go guys. I've been wanting to do this little experiment for some time and just haven't had the chance to do it. I wanted to prove to everybody, without a shadow of a doubt, there is a real good reason why I've been advocating putting a vapour barrier on there. And I'll answer any questions that anybody wants to throw at me, no problems at all. This is the industry standard for any cold surface that you find throughout industry, and it's what I've been brought up with all the years I've been at work. And this is why I keep banging on about it. So hopefully this little experiment will have shown you how good it is. And it's not difficult to achieve. A lot of people say, oh, you can't make a perfect vapor barrier. Yes, you can. Just tape every joint, tape every hole, make sure you seal all the edges. It's not difficult. If you've got pipes sticking out, put some tape around them. If you've recessed a socket box, line the back of the socket box. It's really not difficult, guys. And it will save your van from becoming wet, moldy, damp and rusty at the end of the day so yeah hope you like that one anyway if you have please do give me a thumbs up if you know other people that would like to see this experiment please share it on social media and i look forward to seeing you on the next video cheers guys